Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Roberto Corona. I am an Italian anthropologer and astrologer and in this video we're going to talk about the next full moon in Capricorn which is going to happen on June 22nd which is the day of summer solstice and this means that this moon is going to lead us towards the new season and it is going to be a moon which will manifest its forces primarily in the spirit of Archangel Uriel, the Archangel of old Saturn. You can see a picture of Archangel Uriel here. So in astrosophy and of course anthroposophy, Uriel is the Archangel of the summer season who looks at us with a serious and warning gaze. So we can immediately understand that this moon will not be simple nor uh, very easy to bear. So let's take a look at the chart, starting as always from the latest news in the sky. Now on June 9, Mars has entered Taurus. Here it is in the zodiac sign of its exile. On June 17, both Venus and Mercury will enter together in the zodiac sign of Cancer and that day, June 17, they're going to be in conjunction together entering uh, the zodiac sign of Summer itself, which is um, of course Cancer. This is because by definition when the Sun enters Cancer we have summer solstice and the beginning of summer and in fact uh, on the 21st or 22nd, it really depends on when you, where you are on Earth, um, we, we're going to have summer solstice, of course, in the northern hemisphere. And lastly, on June 30th, we're going to have Saturn um, turning retrograde, meaning that this moon also begins with an emphasis from Saturn. Now, this moon, in general, takes us towards the festival of St. John happening on June 24th, which reminds us that our ego must set in order for our higher self to manifest itself more and more in us. This, according to the Baptist's motto, he must increase, referring to the Christ, our higher self, but I must decrease. So our ego must decrease. And this is something also related to Saturnian forces that we can trace in the imagination of the Archangel Uriel, as described by Rudolf Steiner. Now Uriel, in fact, is the Archangel of old Saturn, who looks at us with this serious and warning gaze that I mentioned, inviting us to transform all our vices into virtues. During a season in which we tend to be more dreamy, more sleepy and more predisposed to making mistakes because in summer we're all like that, right? So this means that we cannot allow um, our lower self to basically prevent our higher self from developing and in order to do that we need to of course work on our shortcomings. Of course this is a full moon and as such this means that we reach a peak in the manifestation process of the etheric forces on the earth and the, uh, this moon represent in particular the manifestation process that began with the new moon uh, in Gemini on June 6. So it is a moment of retrospect of reviewing the past what happened during the last two weeks as the light is shed in the darkness of the night and with Saturn and Saturnian influences we have to say that this moment of awakening can be like sometimes challenging, definitely not necessarily pleasant. So this may be due to the superficial nature of the new moon in Gemini that we described in the uh, previous video. So now we are definitely uh, changing the overall energy and the tides are definitely changing. Uh, it is anyway a moment for awareness, revelations, liberation, release and purification. So let's take a look at the chart in particular and where the moon is located. The moon is here. We have this full moon in Capricorn at 1 degree 07 Capricorn in particular in the starry image of Sagittarius, here it is, 
and the moon is in conjunction with the star spiculum, which in Latin means spear or harpoon. Now this star really is a nebular cluster on the bow of the Sagittarius here, and as usually happens with nebula, they are connected uh, with vision problems. This is because when we are looking at them, we cannot focus on a single star because it's a sort of glittering uh, cluster of stars. And for this reason, traditionally, they are connected to blind blindness or vision issues. Also, blindness in a metaphorical sense, and this means that we can't see things objectively. And we're going to take that into account by interpreting the chart. And the Sun, of course, is on the opposite degree at 1 degree 07 Cancer, the opposite sign. And we can immediately see that the overall shape of this chart introduces us to a, a big T-square configuration. Now, what's a T-square? Now, whenever you have an opposition closed by two squares with a planet in the center, basically creating these two squares, you have a T-square, which uh, is a, a very tense configuration. And in this case, the third planet getting in the way is uh, Neptune. And we're going to see what this means in a second. But before starting, we also have to take into account Saturn because Saturn is going to be the, the ruler of this full moon. In fact, the full moon is in Capricorn. Capricorn is a zodiac sign ruled by Saturn and Saturn is in Pisces. Now, there is something different happening here when we look at Saturn this time. Why is that? Because Saturn is in Pisces and Pisces is ruled by Jupiter. So we want to look at Jupiter to really understand this Saturn because the Saturn technically is ruled by Jupiter. But Jupiter has just changed sign because Jupiter entered Gemini. And Jupiter in Gemini is in exile, meaning that it's not feeling good. It's not working properly. In fact, we have a big push for example, in the world of entertainment with this uh, Jupiter in Gemini, and we know that Jupiter is the philosopher, and so you can tell right away that something is not working very well for the philosopher, like if, if he is focusing too much on the entertainment industry, for example. And this, of course, affects Saturn, and specifically, uh, this means that Saturn's expression uh, will now get worse, basically, and Saturn, with its being serious, is going to react to this Jupiter that is getting more superficial. Saturn is also making a sextile with Uranus. Here it is. This is this blue line connecting uh, Saturn with Uranus is a, um, a sextile, and this means that um, these things that are going to be revealed by the full moon can also lead to a sudden change or creating a hasty feelings. Now, finally, we find Venus, which is combust here in conjunction with the sun. And this Venus is within eight and a half degrees from the sun, meaning that it is in combustion. So very close to the solar furnace that prevents this Venus from working properly. So let's now take a look at the meanings of the chart. Uh, you know me, I always start from the physical point of view. And this moon is basically, uh, let's face it, it's a cold shower because we're leaving behind the lightheartedness of the last new moon in Gemini to find ourselves confronting these revelations, these unveilings, which are typical of the full moon. And here we are called to unravel a chaotic situation. Why chaos is definitely here a keyword in order to understand this uh, full moon. Because we find Neptune, and Neptune is the planet of creative chaos. And of course, creative chaos is super good when we need to get creative, but in terms of a physical understanding of the manifestation of this moon, chaos is not good, right? 
So um, well, on the bright side, we can definitely say that these two squares are out of sign and this means that are weaker. Nevertheless, chaos is something that we are going to confront with this full moon. Now, on top of that, we might have this blind spot, the uh, tendency of not seeing things for what they are because of the star Spiculum that we, we mentioned. And Saturn, which rules the moon, wants us to take responsibility. Now, what does it mean? There's chaos, right? So we need to take responsibility to fix the situation. And being in Pisces, Saturn represents uh, disillusionment. This is a keyword when it comes to Saturn in Pisces. And in this sense, Saturn definitely helps to unravel the chaos that also Pisces represents. Now, on top of that, Saturn is making a sextile with Uranus, and this suggests, as we said, that we might find ourselves to do things or to fix things suddenly or in a hurry. Now, among the causes of this situation, we have Venus in Cancer here that is making an opposition to the Moon. Now, we can understand this Venus in Cancer as our comfort zone, or choosing for the comfort zone. But this is not possible anymore because this Venus is combusted by, by the Sun, by the solar furnace. And so this means that in general, we are called to go through this retrospective uh, to fix things and not to hide, so to speak, in our comfort zone with the side, the gaze of Archangel Uriel on us. Now, from a soul perspective, as we know, the moon in Capricorn can represent loneliness. And this means that we could feel alone, both positively and negatively, because on the negative side, we may be feeling alone in having to solve these problems that we mentioned by ourselves. Of course, this is, this is not ideal. But on the positive side, we may be feeling like to withdraw a little bit more because of other people's emotional drama. And again, this is due to Neptune in Pisces. Here he is. And Neptune in Pisces represents the um, emotions of the collective unconscious. And uh, this involves definitely all the groups that we are part of, but can also refer to family members, which could make us feel groups and family Emotionally invaded, this is the way that I would describe this square by, by Neptune. So on the positive side, we can retreat a little bit more in the Capricorn spirit because we have had enough of all the drama. And from this point of view, the comfort zone of Venus in Cancer can also become a healthy, you know, getting a step backwards in order to avoid being swallowed up really by an overly emotional relational dynamics. So this is not necessarily bad. Sometimes being alone comes with uh, pros, right? Now, from a spiritual point of view, as we mentioned, this moon is completely focused on summer solstice and the festival of St. John. So we have Archangel Uriel as the representative of old Saturn warning us, asking us to harness the forces of the waning moon for a retrospect. This is, of course, a good thing to do during a waning moon. Um, and this retrospective can become a spiritual retrospective in this regard. So we can unravel a chaos which is not necessarily external, it can be an internal uh, chaos that we have in our feelings, maybe because of other people or their drama. And in this way, the clear light of the spirit can enter and uh, can make us perceive our mistakes more clearly. So this is definitely a good opportunity to uh, basically take this blindness represented by the star Spiculum. And in this regard, we can overcome that blindness. Now, this also refers to the starry image of Sagittarius, which uh, always represents an evolutionary process of, of some kind, because in this picture of the Centaur, what we have is a human part 
trying to emancipate itself from a lower part that's an animal part the horse even though these two parts are still connected longing for something higher for the heights of the spirit that are represented in turn by the bow and the arrow of the figure thanks for watching as always if you want to support my work please like this video subscribe to the channel turn on the notification bell not to miss out on future astrological insights i am roberto corona see you in the next video